afternoon. Hello, uh, I'm Steve Tofel, and it's my pleasure to rather quickly turn this over to Jackie Allen, who is the, uh, the chair of our planning committee, who has done an incredible amount of work putting together the framework of a five-year strategic plan. I uh, also want to thank Laura Bellback for the uh, some food that we have here in the room. Sorry for you folks that are virtual. Uh, <laughs> And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jackie. Uh, thanks, Steve, for that opening. I appreciate it. And uh, my name is Jackie Allen. I'm the chair of the planning committee. Uh, I've been involved with OSHER for about six years now, I think it is. And I'm uh, really happy to be here today. I thank all of you for coming. Um, it's a pleasure to have you. And thanks to those online for tuning in. Uh, we're so lucky to have this uh, uh, lots of opportunity, different ways to uh, get involved with OSHER, and uh, you'll hear a lot more about that with our plan. Um, I also wanted to thank the staff for all of their help to get this thing organized and, uh, and put together so well, so uh, thanks to each of you. Um, so we're here today to talk about the OSHER strategic plan, looking forward from 2023 to 2028, um, but I thought before we do that, we'd really like to hear from our members um, two things. And this was mentioned in your you know, uh, reminder that you got this week. Um, what, um, what's something that you um, like the best uh, about OSHA or enjoy the most? And uh, what's something you'd like to change? So two easy questions. And um, we'll uh, go around the room or, you know, we'll start, I'll start with the folks in the room. We'll give people uh, <coughs> online a chance to um, raise their hands if they'd like to. If they, uh, you can use, do that physically or through the little yellow hand button if we have figured out how to use that yet. Um, so let's start in the room. Anybody want to start? Something you enjoy about OSHA, something you wish that you'd like to change. Yes, tell me your name Steve first. Kelly. Steve Kelly, thanks Steve. So there's an easy question and there's a hard question. The easy question is what do I like about what I've seen so far? I'm yes. coming to classes now, well, when, when OSHA was at DOC still, before COVID, so I don't know, three or four years, maybe five years. Mm -hmm. uh, the quality of the people giving courses has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, just, it, it's extraordinary. So the quality of instructors, okay. The quality of the instructors. Uh -huh. Great. Uh, <laughs> what would I like to see change? Uh, I didn't think about that for a little bit. Okay, well, you will come back to you. Thanks, right. Steve. That's okay. Um, do we have a, another uh, comment? Yes, tell us your name. Jill Michaels. I'm not sure. I think that this fits into the question. The uh, answers um, are the right answers. Go ahead. <laughs> there, Osher really is a Vermont, New Hampshire thing. Uh-huh, a Vermont, uh, New Hampshire thing? Yeah. Except it isn't. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, and some of it can just be the programs. Mm -hmm. Some of it could be where various, I, I, once or twice I've gone to something that was um, in Vermont. It was all greenery. It was all trees and things like that. Uh -huh. um, and I just like to, <clears throat> partly because when you come from Philadelphia and you grew up and went to uh, University of Pennsylvania and the Wharton School, it's not like you didn't go to a school. Uh -huh. um, and it would be nice to have the, two, the things intersected um, in the way that it would be really easy if it just were thought about. I don't see it as a, as a hard thing to do. Okay. So it's a Vermont, New Hampshire thing. You wish it were more or of a... Equally Vermont, New Hampshire. Equally Vermont. It may never be equal. Okay. But um, right. just... So it, it seems New Hampshire-centric to you, too. Absolutely. Got it. Just Great. move the campus. <laughs> yeah, right. Other... <laughs> yes, tell us your name. Uh, my name is Jim Hunt. Jim Hunt? Uh, Hunt. Yes, I'm Hunt. teaching a couple of courses uh, here. Yeah, great. And great. Um, I have found... I just moved back to uh, New Hampshire and Vermont to be close to my children. Yes. And I'm, I have found... A home at Osher. Great. A home at Osher. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Someone else. Yes, Bill. Well, probably my comment's not very creative, but uh, what do I enjoy most about Osher? It's uh, continuing to learn about our world and uh, understand it better. And uh, I think that's a big positive, all, of, all that Osher offers. 
Great. Not just the courses, but all the other activities and events as well. Okay, so continuing to learn about your world and sure. all the you know, different array of activities and different ways to get Just involved. very stimulating. Thank you. Makes for a good life. Okay, it makes and, for a good uh, life. I like that. We could use that, Lisa, as a tagline. <laughs> makes for a good life. You got that one? Yeah. If, okay. <laughs> if I was going to say uh, something to change. Please. Boy, uh, I should think more about that one too, like yourself there. But uh, maybe... Uh, Maybe moving back to Hanover someday would be good. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just convenient. Okay. <laughs> Hanover would be more convenient for you. Okay. For me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, tell me. Yes. Go ahead. I'm another Steve, Steve, Steve. Campbell. Yep. Um, we outnumber everybody here today, <laughs> as it should be. As it should be. It, wow. The questions are easy. What I like most is the, the the opportunity to learn about something that I know almost nothing about. New new areas to explore. That's a wonderful gift. And what I would change is equally easy in one word: Imperisoft. It functionally does what needs to be done, but it is inexcusably slow and difficult to use. In Parasoft? Our online registration system. Oh, oh. Yes. <laughs> sorry. Okay. It absolutely can it. I don't care who says otherwise and get something that responds the way normal systems do. Thanks, Steve. So you love the idea you can learn things new that you wouldn't have a chance to learn about otherwise, but you really would like a new online uh, registration system. Just one that performs. One that better. performs. Okay, that's you know fair. what it is, Steve? It's these darn IT people. It's these IT people. <laughs> okay, whoa, whoa, the next whoa, one. Dude, yes. Becca, wow. Yeah, I like to hear what other people are thinking. Okay, so you want to hear what other people I are thinking? I like hearing what other people Oh, you like that? Okay. That's I, why I like those. I can't I hear because others are talking. No. <laughs> Got it. Okay, that's helpful. That's helpful. Okay. Um, yes, uh, may I speak? Thank you. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. here we go. You know, uh, Josette and I have given 20 or more courses, so we, we have lots of experience at OSHA. And what we uh, enjoy doing is learning more about what we already know. You know, we had professional careers, but once you want to teach a course in an aspect of your career, you find that you have gaps. There's things you don't know, there's things you've forgotten. So putting together a course, even on a topic that you're aware of, well, uh, that you worked in, is, uh, is, is a good experience that we always enjoy that. Thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate you sharing that. Are there, um, let's turn to online for a moment. Or we have another in the room, I'll get to Peter in a second, but are there other, um, somebody, somebody online would like to comment? If you raise your hand so we can acknowledge you first, so we know who's talking. <coughs> Uh, do we have anyone, something you enjoy about OSHA, something you'd like to change? Going once, going twice. Am I missing <laughs> anything? We got somebody, Paul Elkin. Elkin. Okay, Paul. Okay, Paul, you're, you're on mute, Paul, if you want to fix that. Muted. Yeah, and then I see some other hands, so I'll get to you in a second. Yep. I think it's wonderful to be among people who are eager to learn and with teachers um, who are really enthusiastic about what they're what they're teaching and what they're talking about. It's just uh, very stimulating to be in that kind of an environment. Thanks, Paul. That's really helpful. Anything you'd like to change? You know, I, I wish I had a greater imagination or, or knowledge of what's what's going on, but, but no, I, I've got nothing nothing serious to offer in that regard. Sorry. Thank you, Paul. That's Quite all right, thank you, appreciate that. Uh, we have another, uh, there were some other hands up that I can't quite see. Barb, Barb Jones, Jones has a hand up. Barb, do you have your hand up? Or do we just see your um, name written across the screen there? Something no, I was trying to well. say that Gail had her hand up and that yeah. she wasn't being acknowledged. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, if, if anybody sees a hand that I don't see, please let me know, Gail, go ahead. Also chair. Oh, there's two Gails? <laughs> oh, just, I think Gail Clausen, go ahead. Right. Hi, everybody. Um, uh, my partner, Patty Warren, and I have been teaching Osher for about five years, maybe six. And I echo everything mm. that everyone said. Um, but I also have to give a huge round of applause to Lisa and the team for being wonderful with anything that we've needed, 
anything that we've desired. They've just been fabulous. So I just want to add that. Thank Thanks, you. Jill. Really helpful. Um, did I see someone else's hand? <laughs> yes, yes. Terry. Terry. Terry, go ahead. Terry. Thanks. Oh, not that Terry. Were there two Terry's? Terry and Beniza. Terry and Beniza, go ahead. This is a fabulous resource uh, for the Upper Valley, a reason to live here. And I, I just hope it continues uh, well beyond the five year horizon <laughs> that we're talking about. Today. Thanks, Terry. That's a good thought. A really good thought. Uh, I know, uh, I don't know if there are any others online while well, we sort yes. them out. Okay, great. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, I think me. <laughs> You know, one, one negative, well, perhaps that is not the correct word, but... Can you just tell us who's speaking? Who's speaking? One... Uh, Malley. Oh, Ray Malley. Ray, Ray Malley. Malley. Okay. Uh, one aspect, uh, the courses we teach, invariably, invariably, there are one, two, or three people who drop out after a course or two, after a session or two. Mm -hmm. So we can expect in a course of 20 to really have 16 or 17 people participate mm -hmm. in the course. Mm -hmm. and, and if there are 15 registered, there'll be 12 or 13. It's too bad mm -hmm. that uh, invariably, say 10% of the uh, participants drop out after a session or two. <clears throat> Thanks, Ray. So yeah, you'd like to see more participation in the classes. So that's a, yeah, Colin that's Osborne. Yep, Colin, go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thanks for asking. Okay, I've taken a number of courses. Uh, what I like is the, uh, as others have said, the diversity of subjects given. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. excellent. Always something to learn. So I like that. The other part I've particularly enjoyed is actually uh, being remote, at least in, in terms of viewing the things. It's tremendously yeah. convenient. Uh -huh. And it's not just because of weather and so forth. It, it saves time and all the rest of it. I, I'm sure I may take uh, some courses in the future in person, uh, but mostly the uh, remote. The other thing about improvement, <clears throat> uh, and I must say too that the courses have been very well presented, lots of useful information, not just verbally, but um, by handouts. And I, I want to make a point about the handouts <clears throat> is um, I've always requested uh, the copies of PowerPoints ahead of the class, because inevitably all kinds of additional information is given verbally during the actual presentation. And it's very convenient and quick to have those sheets available so you can add those extra words and information. So I'd, I'd like to promote that. I think it's very useful to gain the maximum from these courses. but. Excellent uh, program. I hope it goes on forever. It's really very good. Thanks, Colin. That's really helpful. So the diversity uh, of the courses, the convenience <coughs> of the being able to attend remotely, uh, and then an improvement would be making sure you have handouts ahead of time. That's right. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, Marianne Peters. Marianne Peters. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thanks for asking. Great. Oh, terrific. Um, I just wanted to mention, I moved to the Upper Valley. Uh, this coming January will be two years ago from Old Bennington, Vermont. And um, I just, I dropped out of the courses I had registered for this semester because we were taking a month long trip to the Southwest. We got back last night, but at any rate, I've been in, involved in two or three semesters and the quality of the presenters has been wonderful. And I want to congratulate the capabilities of the participants. Uh, the people I've been in classes with have been fantastic, knowledgeable, interested, involved. I've really learned a lot from them. I made, have made one very good friend so far in an in-person course, which has been terrific. The activities, OSHA plans uh, for all the memberships, I, for all the membership, I think have been terrific. And uh, I have to congratulate everyone involved for what's happened during the pandemic. You know, this whole uh, institution did not collapse. People carried on and uh, I think it's just been amazing. 
what would I like to change? The only thing I can think of that was kind of relevant for when I did register initially for this semester, I was kind of disappointed that some of the classes started uh, in, in August. Uh, because of summer plans, I really could not plan to register for those. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think what happened was people were trying to get all the classes in before the holidays, you know, mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, before mm -hmm. Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's, whatever. And mm -hmm. I totally understand that. But I just wished at the time I initially registered that some of the classes were beginning uh, too soon for my summer schedule. Thank you. Thank you. That's very helpful. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I just wanted to get to, was it Peter, you had your hand up and then uh, yeah, I'll be, be happy to hear more. Thank you. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah, I just want to compliment the staff. Mm -hmm. As an instructor, they have held my hand in numerous ways to get me online or offline. <laughs> so support from the staff, support from the staff as an instructor has been extremely helpful. And they make believe they don't see the tears. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Uh, that might be a, it's okay. All right, but go ahead, Bill. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> this actually, in addition to what I said before, this actually is coming from Evangeline Monroe. Uh, a course leader frequently. Uh, I was with her yesterday on our German speaking group and she talked to me about what she would like to have said in this meeting. <laughs> she couldn't be here today. Thank you. And uh, she said, uh, Bill, please tell them my feeling about what to change. Um, and again, this is her talking, not me. Yep. Uh, uh, there should be less courses offered. There were too many offered this fall uh -huh. and it caused people to uh, the class is not to be big enough and courses to be canceled. Uh -huh. uh, that was her, her. Method. So more participation in classes is what she really would like to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and she thinks we can accomplish that by fewer classes. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you were hearing it from me, I'd be happy even with more classes. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get to you in the back and I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Uh, I've just, I'm new to the Upper Valley. Okay. Um, okay. But I've come, Thank I've you. come back. I taught at Hanover High School for 20 years. Uh, yeah, okay. And so mm -hmm. doing OSHER is very different for me in terms of my, the, what, uh, the amount that I present. Mm -hmm. And I find that my students are equal to me or know more than I do. Uh -huh. And I find it a wonderful learning experience for a presenter. A wonderful learning experience for presenters. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Because you have so many people in the class who know so much. Yeah. We have a yeah. question virtually. A question Norman. virtually. All right. And then we'll come back to Jed. A question virtually. Norton or Norman? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, thanks. I, I appreciate the diversity of classes and the wide range of subjects that are covered in the classes, from the very basic political and economic ones to the wide ranging esoteric ones. But I most appreciate the recording of these classes and the availability to look at a class afterwards. I've found there's an occasional class that I cannot attend, and I hate to lose the opportunity to attend, let's say, a six session class because I have to miss one. And there are times that these, in fact, it's almost always, the classes are so good, I want to see them again. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Norman. It's helpful. Really helpful. Jed, you had something? I just wanted to echo the fact that it's um, really nice not to have to teach high school English anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, bravo. <laughs> even college, which I've done both. So uh, when you have people who want to take the course, it just makes all the difference. Excellent. Yeah. And no grading. <laughs> yes. No papers so far. Okay. Uh, Eugenia has a question. Eugenia? I think it's Tom Wilson would like oh, to speak. Sure, go ahead, Tom. Thank you. Yes, uh, my wife and I have been involved in Osher Iliad for over twenty years now. Um, there's a plus here that uh, we don't mention often, and that is uh, the friendships you develop. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it, there's a parallel with their college experience. You go to college to learn but you make friends that are your friends for a lifetime. And uh, OSHER, most courses, of course, have the, a break time and a social time. And uh, that allows you to meet people from the Upper Valley and so on. 
that you might not otherwise meet that have similar interests that you do. So I think it's a big plus that not only do we learn, but we uh, develop friendships through Iliad and Osher. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Tom. That was good. Um, there was another. Go ahead, um, Eugenia. Carol? Eugenia has her hand up. Oh, Eugenia, thank you, because we couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. Great, Eugenia. <laughs> yes, I moved here four four years ago, and immediately went looking for what has always been called in my world continuing education. I just love learning. I found Osher, and I was astounded by two things. One is, as people have said, the diversity of subjects. I found things that I never would have thought of being interested in. And also the sense of community. It's not just going to school. You're meeting people, hanging out with them and attending events. So it's been a wonderful find for me. Thanks, Eugenia, that's really helpful. Uh, am I missing any other? I've got my deputies out there, my spies. Am I missing any other hands uh, online before we get to one in the room here? Okay, going once, going twice. Diane, you had something, go ahead. I have something, Diane, I work here at Osher. I have something from a class that's being held so they couldn't be here, um, is that the idea of the this week's hot plates, hot topics, mm -hmm. where one person speaks for a one-time um, event and can socialize is to just keep those coming. I love those. Excellent, okay, that's great. Yeah, um, in case you don't know, Diane's talking about an event we had on Wednesday, Wednesday this week, um, where uh, Rob Gerwitz from Der uh, Daybreak uh, gave a great talk about how, you know, the, the future of local news and, um, you know, what changes he sees and how it can survive, basically. It was really well done. Yeah, thanks, Diane. That's a good call out. Okay. Uh, if... Uh, well, we can talk more and give more input. Um, I thought maybe you'd turn now to what the plan what the plan is that we've developed. Um, and I think that's probably one of the reasons you're all here. And okay, it's, uh, you're okay, here. We go. Um, let me just say too, though, that um, hearing from all of you is really very super helpful. It's terrific. Uh, so um, when I, uh, I guess it was about a year ago or so, I was asked, would I chair the planning committee? And uh, I said, okay, sure. <laughs> but you know what? It's turned out to be a really good thing. Um, uh, and it's been a really, what I've particularly enjoyed, and I'll get to that in a minute, is just working with the, the team that I've had available to me to, to, to get this done. Um, but the first thing I did when I was asked to do the plan was say, okay, where's the last plan, right? And you know, we can build on that or, you know, or, or implement that. Or, you know, that's kind of what I did as a planner before. And it turned out um, the last plan was the 2009 to 2015 plan. And it was 2021. So I said, well, I think we ought, you know, maybe it's time to do the new plan. And uh, got great buy-in for that. Um, and, and this is the wonderful group. Um, uh, that you can see we spent a lot of time on Zoom. There's most of us on Zoom. And uh, we've got uh, Mary Grizzard, uh, Peter Paquette, Punch Taylor, Brian Edwards, Carol Westberg, Bill Secord, Laura Schneider, Jim Lynch, Roy Finney, Steve Toffel, Hillary was with us, um, Joan uh, Hartwell, uh, Terry Martin, Sarah Chamberlain from the staff was been a rock, Hank Clark, Terry Darcy, Lisa, of course, from the staff, Deb LeCour and Ian Sims. So it was a wonderful group of folks to, uh, uh, to get together. And we figured out at one point that we had 164 years of Osher experience among us. So uh, it was nice to be around that much experience. Um, uh, so we said, okay, what, what are we trying to do with this plan? We said, my gosh, we just been through like, you know, two and a half years or two years of COVID. Uh, let's step back for a minute. Let's take stock. What did we learn? And how can we apply that you know, looking forward? Yeah, so just uh, some fun facts that you may or may not know about Osher. We have over 1400 members, uh, 210 courses annually, uh, over 190 study leaders and growing. 
uh, we have members from 29 states and two countries. So it's quite an impressive uh, organization. The, uh, the process that um, our group followed, we started out by um, thinking about, okay, what are we good at? You know, what, you know, what do we need to improve? What are other OSHAs doing? We looked at a lot of other strategic plans from other OSHAs around the country. We looked at our last plan. And, um, and from all of that, we drafted some strategic statements that I'll be sharing with you today to help frame the plan. Uh, we then took, ran around to all of the different standing committees with our strategic statements, say, what do you think of this? You know, what will your, how can your group contribute <clears throat> to this? What are some of the actions that we could take? What are some of the measures of success so we can get these things done? And from all that, uh, as I say, we cobbled together the plan that you're gonna see here today. Um, uh, we are here right now in uh, it's October, but um, continuing to meet with the uh, committees, holding this town hall meeting, uh, meeting with the leadership council, getting all that feedback. The planning committee will be taking that over the next two weeks, what we hear today, what we heard from the leadership council this morning, and uh, finalizing the plan. The plan will go in front of the leadership council at their November meeting. And if all goes well, uh, we will then be off and running, looking for a January launch. Okay. Got a question. Sure. Can you uh, tell me a couple of other places where Osher is located? I, that was the first time I had ever heard of that. Oh, wow. Okay. 125 places. <laughs> oh, okay. 125. Yeah. 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 yeah, I was just going to say the experts are over here, but yes. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah. Uh -huh. And any two, any two places would be interesting. Uh, I know Duke is one. one is the closest to Northwestern University. Yeah. Northwestern. Yeah. So they're normally. But they're called Ollie. Mm -hmm. Osher Lifelong Learning Osher Institute. Lifelong Leadership right. Institute. Yeah. There's one at Duke. There's one at Lisa. What are some of the other the ones we partner with? Uh, the UMass, Boston, series. UMass yeah. Boston, Granite State. Tufts and has a large, Tufts uh, has a large program. Tops, yeah, oh. right. University oh, okay. Uh, Athens, oh. University of Georgia, they attend our summer lecture series. So yeah, they're kind of all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. You can actually go right online and they show you a map. If you look, if you um, type in OSHER lifelong learning, it shows you a map across the United States and you can click on any state. It'll show you where the programs are. I'll tell you, my technology is not oh, strong, so I may ask you to yeah. do that for me. <laughs> we can do that. Sure. <laughs> so um, as I say, we started out by looking at, okay, what do we think we're good at? And you know, I think you echoed a lot of our thoughts uh, today, um, our staff experience, our volunteer ex uh, expertise, um, support we get from Dartmouth, uh, it's huge help. Uh, we have a lot of financial discipline here, which enables us to keep moving forward in a really good way. Um, the breadth and depth of our curriculum, for sure. Uh, and the new facilities at Court Street. My gosh, this place is like fantastic. And I don't know if you all know or remember, but we opened in January, eight, end of January, 2020. So if you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and then on March 13th, you know, it all cut off. So yeah. Um, you have to just silence the duck. Hang on. <laughs> Apologies to you online. We're just silencing the duck in the room. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so we went. We went for almost two years where most people had never even been in the building. So we're so thrilled to be able to um, now actually make use of this fabulous facility. Uh, and last but not least, you're experiencing it now. We've just gotten this thing up and running. You're almost first large group that we've tried it with, uh, this what we're calling high flex capability. And with Dartmouth's uh, guidance and, and help, we have really a state of the art system here that we're still learning to use, but we're going to get real good at this real fast. <laughs> <laughs> Promise. <laughs> and in terms of, you know, where do we need to focus? Where, um, uh, you know, can, where do we think, what are the priorities in terms of getting better? Uh, one, you, a lot of you mentioned is participation. You know, we have 1400 members. How many members have, you know, taken a class and come all the way through? Uh, how many members have ever gone to an annual meeting or tried one of our trips? Or, you know, we think there's lots of opportunity to help 
members engage more successfully with our programs because we've got a lot of it. We have a lot of programs. Uh, what can we do to help people participate more? Jim? I, I asked too many questions today. <laughs> I'm usually a silent admirer of others. Where do you go, let's say, for a field trip? I haven't heard anything like that. I ta I've been teaching Shakespeare courses. I'd love to take my class to a production. Hold that thought, yes, because Hold actually we thought. have a okay. yeah we have a really good we we've developed we're developing an infrastructure to accomodate that idea. So I think that's um, hold that thought. That's a good one. Okay. The um, uh, the other thing we, you know is um, partnering with other organizations. So we work very collaboratively with a lot of organizations around the um, Upper Valley. Uh, Peter's here today. He has developed a very successful um, sponsorship program for our um, summer lecture series. That um, uh, is a big help to uh, the organization. Uh, we think we can do more with part with other organizations in the Upper Valley. We think we can be a better partner and help them be a better partner to us. And you know, there's strength in numbers, and we think that can really help us strengthen the program, strengthen the experience for our members. Um, and last but not least, as I already mentioned too, is hybrid learning. We wanna get really, really great at this. And um, we've now got the technology to do that. So we see that as a real opportunity for the organization. So um, our starting point for the strategic plan was the mission statement of the organization. Can I ask a question? That sure, yeah, go ahead. Um, I know that there are individual classes with courses and folks running them who are of African-American or Chinese or, you know, those, ha I know those happen periodically. So I know that it's, it's not that they don't happen, but it would be really interesting as you think about expanding. Mm -hmm. um, there are connections that could be, I mean, uh, Jarvis could, I'm not sure mm -hmm. exactly that Jarvis should run a program, but Jarvis should run a, would be fast, would be absolutely delighted to do it mm -hmm. from, um, yep. and, and that's just an example because we, I hope we all know him, you know, I don't know. And, mm -hmm. um, so the idea then is, yeah, how can we diversify the- Yeah, uh, and yeah. I think okay. that's, yeah. that's something that- Fair point. We have a responsibility to do that. We get, one of the absolute downsides of Vermont mm -hmm. is that, that stuff doesn't happen on the eastern side of the state. It happens on the western side of the state. Mm -hmm. So we have to- We have to work at it. Yeah. Yeah, we have yeah. to work at it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, okay. Um, the, the mission statement that we're talking about here was actually developed by our governance committee and the leadership council uh, right before COVID or around COVID around that time. And we wanted to put that into action. And the statement is here. Um, uh, to provide lifelong educational opportunities, both in person and virtually. We principally serve adult residents of the greater Upper Valley and members of the greater Dartmouth community. So that's our mission, okay? That's been poured over by, as I say, committee and, and leadership council. And then in addition to that, they developed the, uh, our values and unwavering commitment to lifelong education and inclusive community of people committed to our mission a large, diverse, high quality program led by dedicated and talented volunteers, a welcoming social environment within and beyond the classroom, financial sustainability, member affordability and planned growth, strong growing relationships with Dartmouth <laughs> College and the Osher Foundation with appropriate access to their facilities, services and expertise. So this is who we are. This is what the organization has developed. And this is what we're after uh, with our strategic plan to see if we can't uphold this and push it further, okay? Um, so the overall goal that the committee came up with for the plan, we want to ensure the success of OSHA at Dartmouth by increasing member satisfaction and recruiting new members. So we're a membership organization. Our focus is on the members. So we want to make a better experience for the members we have and make sure we keep growing our membership. That's our focus area. Paul has a question. Sure. Paul? You have a question online? I do. Um, the, the, the participation and the, the connections are, as you said, they're, they're focusing on the Upper Valley. Mm -hmm. Would we have access to the uh, alumni roles 
for Dartmouth who can be worldwide. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's a, a large yeah. population. Are we tapping into that population beyond right. the Upper Valley area? As a matter of fact, uh, yeah, I would say, um, you know, yes, can we do more? Yes, yes, yes. Um, there have been lots of discussions with Dartmouth and uh, expand, we are expanding our reach within the Dartmouth population. We're in the process of doing that. It's slow, it takes time, but we're making it happen. And yeah, we, I think we all see the opportunity there for sure. And, and actually it, it has happened. I mean, we have had more participation from all over the place since COVID for sure. Another uh, comment? Yes. yes uh, Several times you re referred to su su support from Dartmouth, et cetera, et cetera, as uh -huh. though we were not part of Dartmouth completely. Mm -hmm. how, how is the relationship? I mean, we are Dartmouth, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yes. Steve, you want to come in on our, uh, what is our technical relationship? We are a uh, endowed institute at Dartmouth, uh, very much you know, part of the university system in that sense. We're self-funding, uh, although Dartmouth does some great things for us financially, uh, we're, we're expected to fund ourselves and we do uh, quite successfully. Yeah. So yeah, we're, we are OSHER at Dartmouth. Yeah, yeah, so that, that's all true. Having said that, we've also acknowledged many, many times, you know, we are, I don't know if you can see me online, but we're about this big, you know, compared to the, you know, the rest of the Dartmouth organization. So, you know, we're not top of mind, but we are, you know, one of their assets. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I think Peter Peter pointed out today that Dartmouth has an, over, an annual budget of about 1.2 billion, of which we are about half a million. Yeah. So that puts so. it in perspective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A small but wonderful group. Uh, Sorry, Jim, me again. Go ahead. I'm going to teach a Native American a piece of Native American literature, and I'm also going to do a black novel. Um, and I am going to work with someone or someone's from Dartmouth, and I think that's absolutely lovely. <clears throat> and they may come into the classroom mm -hmm. to be a part of that. Good. Yeah. So there's lots of ways we can integrate ourselves. Yeah. That. I think that's a really. It's good going idea. on. Yeah. It's it's good to. See. Sure. I just had a quick question. We used to have a, a colored catalog. That, have we abandoned that? Yes. Oh, yeah, to online. Yes, we have. You mean the paper catalog? The paper. Yeah, that catalog. saved us a bunch. <laughs> What's that? That saved us a whole lot of money when we went online. Yeah. yeah. I'm just wondering yeah. if there are people out there that aren't, yes. are, are not computer savvy and right. have trouble with We still do have the online. insert at the Valley News. Yep. So basically, due to COVID, um, we did away with the printed catalog because of COVID and then found that after COVID paper tripled in cost. Mm -hmm. So financially, it just didn't make sense because our, our members, the majority of them had already figured out how to register online. With that said though, we do have people that call and they'll ask for us to print a catalog. We can run it off or we have the Valley News insert, which is a lot less expensive. And it has basically, it's just a much shorter explanation of the courses that we have being offered. Um, but it really is, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, Faye, it was one of probably our most prominent marketing tools to That's put right. it out in the Upper Valley That's and wonderful. we put it out in a round. And Lisa, there's more to that too. You sit in your chair and you go through it yes. slowly. Yes. You don't have to stare at a screen, damn yeah. screen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I hear you. You could yeah. give folks a yeah. choice. You could say, mm -hmm. we are gonna put this online. Would you like, <clears throat> Paper, paper and then and that costs i think that's yeah. an, that's a suggestion we should look into that we may there may be a way to print them right here in house and yeah. just charge and, and, people yeah. mm -hmm. or yeah. they can come pick it up i mean there may be a way that we can uh, make that an option yes and i'm sorry just, tell us your uh, name uh, uh, yeah. adding on yeah. to that okay. thought yep there was also used to be a roster mm -hmm. of people of other members yep so we could, you know, go look up uh, Lisa Edwards or whatever and uh -huh. find out what her email address is. So you can start the, and, and uh, the, the membership directory. A membership so a membership directory, directory a, a membership roster directory. would be really helpful. So yeah. yeah. So the membership directory, we update four times a year. It's online. Many of our members opt not to be in it because they, That's don't, fine. they yeah. don't want to, but um, maybe we should 
maybe this is a good point is reminding people that we do have it. And mm -hmm. if you would like it, we can just add you to the Google <coughs> Drive where it's accessible um, in case Drive. you're looking for someone. Because I know it, it's Google helpful Drive. when you're planning events or looking for somebody that was in a previous class. Right. Um, so we could we yeah. could make that more accessible for people. Good how, suggestion. Yeah. How Thank would you. I how would I know where to find that? Um, you have to be given a link. Yep. It, you just call the office and we can give you a link to where it. the first page. Lisa, do you of, just leave the people out of the list then that don't want to be listed? Yeah. Yep. yep. There's an option that they have, and many okay. people will tell us that they yeah. choose not to be in the directory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Diane, you have something that I want to get through the presentation. Go ahead, so Diane. So for the RAWs, just for yep. the classes, like lots of people want a carpool, for instance. Yes. Those are available for every class, <laughs> and we do provide them to all the participants. So there are rosters for classes. And they're also yes. here in the okay. binder. All right, good. So the smaller cluster is already available. Mm -hmm. We're hearing some great ideas, which is why we wanted to have this meeting, which is really helpful. Um, I do want to finish the presentation, but go ahead, Bill. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Um, the mission statement uh, focus the um, focus on Upper Valley people uh, for being members. Yes. Uh, with with the Zoom uh, capability, is there a recruiting effort going on now to expand that beyond the Upper Valley into say areas where those other 125 Oshers aren't present? I wouldn't go that far. We think there's a lot of opportunity where we are now. And I, I mean, really, we, our focus is building community. And, um, yeah, and I would support yeah. that. And I'm just so, curious. Yeah. Are so, doing... I mean, there's been a lot of discussion about how to go farther afield, and we are farther afield. But I, you know, from everything I've heard and learned so far, that's never going to be like our priority, um, mm -hmm. I would say. I would agree yeah. with that. Yeah. I was yeah. kind yeah. of curious. But it's going on, it's just not our priority. Okay. Yeah. Um, just moving to our strategic statements here, um, these are the five that we came up with, okay? Um, offer an exceptional curriculum. We think that's our core uh, task to get done, and uh, I was pleased to hear so many of you acknowledge that in the opening comments. Increase participation. Many of you have also talked about that. You like it better when there's more people in the class, for example. Um, strengthen our partnerships. This is with other organizations in the Upper Valley so that we can do good for each other. Continuously improve our technology, the website, the back end office, um, so that people have an easy, easier way to access us. And lastly, uh, is to foster good governance. I'm going to talk about a little bit about each one of these to give you an idea of what our thinking is. And then we're going to open it back up to uh, more discussion. The, um, our statement one is uh, offer an exceptional curriculum that meets the needs of OSHA members. Uh, some of the ways we're going to measure ourselves of whether we're getting this done or not. What's our course enrollment? How is it holding up? Uh, what's our member satisfaction with our classes? And what's our study leader satisfaction? A very important contingent. We want to make sure we're satisfying the uh, members' needs as well as the study leader needs. Put, putting focus on that. Some of the activities that will help to make that happen is our course design, uh, our study leader training and support. We've got a good infrastructure in place now to do that. We want to keep getting better at it. Uh, continuously improving our virtual delivery. Everybody's a little new at this, we have to keep getting better so that everybody has a good experience. And then lastly, uh, making sure we have good feedback me mechanisms so we know if what's, what's good and what needs to be changed. Um, so that's where our curriculum, in terms of um, uh, strategic statement number two, increasing participation in OSHA courses and other activities. How are we gonna know if we get this done? Uh, once again, we're looking at member satisfaction, and there are different ways to, to figure that out. Uh, uh, working on those metrics, what's the participation, how many people you know, are coming to the annual meeting, as I say, or the holiday party, or whatever the thing is, or coming to the classes. Um, and then what's our member retention and growth? To what extent are we retaining members year over year? And to what extent are we uh, growing our membership? Um, in some of the actions that will support these metrics and uh, move them further. Uh, number one is we need some new measurements. Because <coughs> frankly, we don't know all these things today. We're not, we're not looking at them as well as we could look at them. We know how many people came to the classes, but we don't know how many people took 10 classes, how many people took one class, you know, trying to look at more individuals and how are they 
able to access OSHER or not, that will help us really uh, customize our activities in a better way. Uh, designing a communication plan that's uh, more individualized to members to help them participate more easily. Implementing a new member orientation. We think there's a lot of value to be gained as people are new members so that they understand the array of activities, how to engage, you know, how, what are the opportunities to volunteer uh, at OSHER to help out. Uh, so giving people an easier track to run on to get involved from the get-go rather than I think probably an experience many of us have you join an organization and it takes a couple of years to figure out what's going on okay um, <laughs> lastly uh, developing new activities and events there was a comment on that in the beginning of the meeting people were enjoying the new activities and um, uh, we do have some infrastructure that is coming together that will help us to continue that activity and grow it um, so that's our statement number two on increasing participation in uh, OSHA courses and other activities. Uh, statement number three, strengthening our partnerships with other Upper Valley organizations, the Greater Dartmouth Community and other OLLIES, which is the other acronym for our OSHA uh, organization. We mentioned the 125 around the country. How are we gonna know if we get this done? Uh, we've got shared programs. So, um, to what extent can we partner with other organizations to you know, make our program even richer? You know, you've seen some examples in the course catalog, for example, where we're giving um, a class in conjunction with Northern Stage is a good example, all right? Or um, working with the Dartmouth professors or working with other OLLI organizations to share programs. Those are all ways to make, enrich our programs and make more available to members. Um, uh, how, to what extent can we grow membership through these partnerships? As an example, uh, if we are partnering with uh, retirement communities or uh, assisted living uh, facilities or those types of places, you know, to what extent can we help those members get involved in OSHA, make a better experience for people in that organization and, uh, and enriches us as well. And um, lastly, sponsorships. We've had some great success um, getting local organizations interested in sponsoring um, uh, our organization. How can we grow that? It could be an important revenue source for us and help our financial sustainability. So the key actions here, we need to, who are those key organizations we'd be focused on and who are the people that we need to get to know to get something done? Uh, make sure we have mutual goals. How can we help them as well as how can they help us? It's gotta be a two-way street. And then um, having a communication plan to sustain that and bring it to fruition, okay? So that's our strategic statement three, strengthening partnerships. Um, statement number four is improving technology used by staff, members, volunteers, and potential new members. Two measures of success here. One is office productivity. You know, sadly, we have some tasks that take way too much time, administrative tasks that are taking too much time for our staff. We'd like them to be doing all the other great things that they do uh, <laughs> to help us uh, in a better way than the administrative tasks sometimes do. <laughs> so you head nodding going on by Lisa and Laura. And then uh, the website ease of use. We know we always have to get, keep getting better at the, on the website. Some key actions here, uh, we're assessing the back office uh, processes and the software, uh, evaluating the website experience. And then lastly, we will identify solutions for improvement. So this is a whole technical track we're on uh, to keep building our infrastructure. Uh, last but not least, governance. <clears throat> the um, idea here is to foster member participation in the governance of OSHA. I've, from my, I think not only my perspective, I, th I think others will share this, but one reason we are so successful is because of the depth and breadth of the volunteers that we have. I mentioned uh, over 190 faculty. We probably have over 150 other volunteers that work for this organization, including the panel here in front of you. Uh, the committee people that I told you about, you just saw, that was the tip of the iceberg, the planning committee. We have uh, six other really strong committees that help support this organization and keep it going. So um, we want to continue to foster that participation. Maybe many of you involved here, to, if you hear something that you're good at or that you're interested in today, for, you know, come help us because, um, you know, we can use all the help we can get. Uh, and we also want to maintain a focus on succession planning so we always know who you know, 
who are the next officers, who are the next committee chairs. Uh, we need to keep that uh, pipeline going. So measures of success here, the governance committee will be uh, pull this all together to make uh, annual recommendations and report to the leadership council so we know we, where we stand on succession. Uh, and um, oh, here, here we go. And uh, making sure those plans are in place. Some of the key actions, uh, improving coordination between staff and committee work, making sure the organization is running smoothly, that we don't have too much work on one side, too little work on the other side, everybody's talking to everybody. You know how that goes. And uh, uh, making sure that we're helping uh, the committees uh, and, and the organization as a whole, uh, identifying potential leaders that can rise to the top, okay? Uh, and as I mentioned, I hope you'll all think about, you know, if you're not volunteering for OSHA yet, that, um, that maybe you will in the future. So uh, that's the extent of our plan. Uh, our next steps are, review, revise, and um, seek leadership council approval. And as I say, launch implementation in January. Uh, as I mentioned, we want to have some more discussion. <laughs> we always want to keep, it, we want to keep it happy, work. keep it light. <laughs> cover, cover the next catalog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's I love that picture. It's such, it's, just great. it's such a funny picture. Um, so we can do uh, two things today. I, I thought um we've got 2.30, so we have a little bit of more time. We have about a half hour. Um, the folks here on the panel I asked to join me because I thought it might be interesting for uh, many of you to get to know some of these people a little bit better and also hear their perspectives on the plan. Uh, we can also keep it you know, open to the group. So maybe we'll do it this way. If the panel would quickly introduce themselves, uh, tell us your role at Osher and how long you've been involved in Osher. And then um, I have one or two questions uh, that we could talk about, and then I'd like to turn it back to the audience for their comments. Okay. Lisa, did you want to sit? Say it again. Lisa, did you want to sit on this? Oh, yeah. Lunch? That's okay. Thank you, though. Yeah. Bill, you <laughs> want to start? Hi, I'm Bill Secord. I'm co chair with Hillary of the curriculum committee, which is the most important committee in OSHA. Not even, it's more important even than finance. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been involved with OSHA because of Pete since uh, 2011, I think. So it's been, it's been quite a while. And you were reluctant, as I recall. Yes, he, <laughs> he wanted me to come on board for one week, for one year. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Go ahead, Peter. Uh, my name is Peter Paquette. I'm the former uh, chair of the Finance Committee, which is what Bill was referring to. I'm the current uh, vice president, president-elect. I'll be taking office from Steve beginning next July. Um, I've been with Osher about five years, um, taken probably 30 courses over that time frame. Wow. Uh, I'm Steve Toffel. I am the president of Osher and I've uh, been involved, I guess, for about eight years. Uh, and I have, uh, I think, uh, seven months and uh, <laughs> <laughs> about eight, two eight, weeks eight, left eight, of it. Eight, eight, eight months. Eight months. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> left in my presidency and uh, would want to take the opportunity to thank our staff yeah. and uh, all the committee members at Osher. Uh, the, it's really what keeps this organization going and the study leaders especially. So thank you. Thank you, Steve. I'm Hillary Llewellyn Tobbs. That's one L in Hillary. <laughs> and a plethora of L's in Luella. <laughs> All the L's in the Scrabble board. <laughs> I appreciate that. And I also appreciate, I'm a co-leader uh, of the curriculum committee with, with Bill and actually following in his footsteps and learning uh, as, as desperately quickly. <laughs> How the heck did you do this, Bill? <laughs> and um, let's see, I've been involved with Osher for since about... I think 2010 or thereabouts and taken a number of courses, I think 15, well, I don't think 30. Um, and had so much fun with those courses and I'm having so much fun now. And I, I this is a quote, it's not my, it's not, it's, it's not something I came up with. I think it was in a, a business management or um, a textbook, which is- Speak um, out. 
if you ain't getting rich or having fun, then what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're trying to do here is have, have fun. fun. Because <laughs> you get rich. <laughs> you get rich. Ian? Yeah, Ian Sim. Um, I've been involved in OSHA since 2012, I think it is. Uh, done a number of jobs, number of positions over the years, I guess. Right now, I'm sitting here wearing my governance committee hat. I chair the governance committee, which is, uh, I think it's fairly self-explanatory what governance does, but I'm happy to talk about it a little bit further if that's what concerns you. Okay, thanks. <coughs> um, Lisa King, um, director of OSHER and have been with the program since 1995. Wow. Um, <laughs> It's not a one woman show. Um, I have a great team and I'm just going to give a shout out. Um, Sarah Chamberlain um, has been with the program 10 years. Laura Bellback has been with us seven years and Diane has been here seven years. So um, we appreciate that. Um, okay, quick fire answers. Uh, what are you most excited about this plan with, with this plan, Bill? Well, the, uh, speak the, out so our audience the, plan, can hear us. the plan really addresses three items that have been on the curriculum committee's docket for three or four years. One is we're finally going to do data collection and data analysis in an organized fashion. It's a new ball game. After, you know, after COVID and with the internet, we're up against all sorts of uh, competition. We've got to analyze the data. We have to collect <coughs> and relevant data and analyze it. So that's, that's one point. Uh, three things. The second is it's got a communication structure. For four years now, the curriculum committee is trying to get its own internal communication straight. We have five subcommittees uh, and let alone communicating with the rest of the organization. So getting a communications plan, uh, a protocol in place is, is going to be game changing. And finally, the web design, it's come up a couple of times. Uh, things are mentioned about that are on the website, but people don't know about. It. And we're trying to get stuff on the website for curriculum development in a much more accessible way. And that's gonna be addressed by the plan too. So those three things. Thanks, Bill. Peter? Um, I think that the plan is useful because it finally gives us a roadmap. For the last four years, we've been kind of winging it. Um, beginning in 2000, 18 when Dartmouth said, oh, by the way, you can no longer stay at the DOC house. And we spent 18 and 19 trying to find a, a place that I call the transition phase, going from Dartmouth to somewhere. We ended up here. Mm -hmm. And as somebody said before, we got here just in time for COVID to crush us. And we went from transition phase to transformation stage. Because <laughs> that was all in person, if you remember that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we in two weeks, we moved from all in person to all Zoom. And now we've been backfilling with more in-person, backfilling with high flex. So we've been in kind of a transformation phase. So I think that this is useful to get us out of this kind of winging it and giving us kind of a more firm roadmap as to what we need to accomplish over the next four or five years. I think that it's looking out far enough that it, that it says, okay, you can deal with the, the vicissitudes of the moment, but you still have these other big issues out there you have to address. Thanks, Peter. Steve? Yeah, one of the things that we uh, started with when we started this whole strategic plan process was a SWOT analysis, which is uh, our strengths, strengths, weaknesses, weaknesses opportunities. opportunities, and threats. Uh, threats. threats. Okay. Uh, threats. 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 Yeah. What we threats. what we saw was that other people can do online learning, uh, but in person learning is something that we that's why so much focus on curriculum, but also social events. Mm -hmm. uh, and toward that, we have we are concluding a lease or about to uh, to take over uh, about 1,500 more feet of space here, which will allow for socialization. One of the nice things about the DOC mm -hmm. house was just running into people in that lobby, uh, sitting between classes and talking. And it's not it's something that we're short on here, and we're going to be putting one in and a library with books donated by Joe Medlicka. Where is that going to be? It's uh, on the second floor. Oh, the, it's in right hall. in this building. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Um, also, Lisa and staff have jumped on socialize, uh, socialization projects. Uh, the King Tut exhibit that they went to, Tina Turner, these are all sold out. The Clark Museum, 
the Hood Museum is going on right now. There's a docent guided tour uh, taking members who want to go through the Hood. Uh, the uh, David Bisno gave a talk on. Uh, that's okay. You can go ahead and have the cheese. He <laughs> <laughs> gave a wonderful lecture on Saturday. Uh, Hamilton is something that Lisa's working on a trip to Boston. Uh, and then we reinstituted the hot plates and hot topics. Uh, all of these things bring our members together. And that's not something that they can do online. And I think that's, that's critically important. So that's, Thanks, that's, that's off to Lisa and crew. Hillary, what are you most excited about in the plan? I think the way the plan is offering an opportunity for two things to, well, there's actually four things I'm excited about, but because um, I'm wanting to follow up with what others have said, but the um, the balance, the, uh, yeah, I guess balance between innovation, mm -hmm. creativity, and uh, and a structure and a, and a stra strategic plan to op operate, operate those innovative mm -hmm. ideas, to put them into action. And in that, in doing that, I think what we're what this plan is allowing us to do too is to be transparent about those efforts <clears throat> for the full membership to be involved. So that's pulling in a lot of talent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's <clears throat> worth it. Thank you, Hillary. You? Uh, yeah, governments might seem like a rather sort of dull topic, but I, I actually see this as an opportunity. And it reminds me, I don't know how many other people out here might remember the name of. Ed Koch, the mayor of New York City. Mm -hmm. So when I first arrived in this country in the late 1980s, living in New Jersey, you know, 20 miles or so west of Manhattan, Ed Koch was always on the phone, uh, on the TV. And what I took away always from that was the first thing he did was say, how am I doing? <laughs> always asking the voters, how am I doing? So I see this as a great opportunity for us in governance to ask all the membership, how are we doing? <laughs> And what can we do better? So I hope that you know, as a result of all of this plan work, that we will end up with an even more uh, participatory uh, OSHA membership uh, that really, really gung ho on how we're doing and what we're doing, and we can really. Uh, you mentioned diversity. Actually, I have a little card here. This is the uh, key governance tasks. It's a sort of generic list, but it so happens number twelve manage board diversity and inclusiveness. So that's something that we'll be looking to see. How are we doing? Can we do better? And so that's yeah, what I, I like about the you plus. carry that card with you. <laughs> that's my Joe Biden card, you know? <laughs> also, the, the letters are so tiny that only you can read it. <laughs> Lisa, what are you most excited about? Um, I think I'm most excited about just the opportunities that, that there's just so much now that we've actually been through COVID. We've had the ex opportunity to have people um, instruct from us that are living all across the country and members that are living across the country. And the other thing is expanding our course opportunities on Zoom with other OSHA programs, which we did as a pilot um, this fall. Uh, we did it with AIL. They gave us one course and they chose 20 spots in different courses in the universe, UConn University, another OSHA program, we swapped five courses. And this can be done all across the country with a little bit of organization and it would save some of our instructors from teaching in multiple places. They could teach one time and have several different OSHA programs joining on the Zoom. Um, Is and there I'm just- anybody doing um, Aboriginal, I mean, as based, you know, what's going on over at Hood, any anybody doing Aboriginal uh, art as Dean Schaefer is okay. teaching? He, no, I don't mean here. I meant you were talking about getting in touch with or getting connected to folks all over the place. She's just teaching locally in person, so the, the <clears throat> teaching across the board would have to obviously be on Zoom. Um, but I just I just think it's an exciting opportunity that it would give exposure to our members to courses that they potentially wouldn't be able to take mm -hmm. and yep. and you know uh, also an opportunity to expand our offerings and hopefully maybe uh, different instructors that we wouldn't have been able to okay expose to our program. Thanks, Lisa. I appreciate that. I'm going to turn it back to the audience and we'll go back to the panel. Um, so you've heard a lot now and we've been talking and so we want to hear from you. Uh, and uh, members online, if you have a question or comment or anything, please put your hand up and we'll recognize you in a moment. We've got a couple in the room here first, Jed and then Peter. Well, what you see is our 
uh, competition, uh, other than other OSHA courses. I mean, for years there have been the, uh, the courses you can buy the tapes and so forth and so on. So how do you see the- Yeah, so the question is, it's a good one for those online. If you didn't hear it, it's what do you see as our competition? And I think probably Lisa, you could summarize that the best. Yeah, I mean, our competition just isn't programs like us, it's life. <laughs> I mean, we are, we are an extra, I mean, it's, you know, an enhancement for people's lives. So, I mean, it's something that we have to compete mm. with family, mm -hmm. health, vacations, um, de destination. <laughs> um, but I think competition is good because we're actually, I consider AIL our competition because they're 30 minutes down the road and yet we're collaborating. So, mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> yeah. Peter? Yeah. Um, first two strategic statements there and what you're looking for is member satisfaction and growth and stuff yes a couple of things one thing that i've noticed in the courses i've taken recently including my own that i've offered is that most everybody who signs up shows up at the first session and then attendance drops off mm -hmm. some of these people never come back yep and if you and somebody's keeping a tennis, you know who those people are. Yes. If you go go to those people and find out why mm -hmm. they weren't coming back, mm -hmm. and maybe that will help you. That's a good idea. So so look for for those who don't come back to a class, contact those folks just to find out why mm -hmm. why why, and that would be some good input for us. I think that's a great way a great way to get some data. Um, uh, Steve, you wanted to comment? Go, go ahead. Toward Pete's comment. Okay. Uh, Alice Dantos had sent a letter in suggesting uh, that we uh, quickly contact people at the beginning of courses. Um, perhaps that's a role for this class rep, but to find out how to go after the first class, not at the end, mm -hmm. so that you can quickly address any issues that you might have. They can be simple ones like I can't hear the study leader, or they could be, I don't think he knows what he's talking about, <laughs> but it could you know, but get that on the table very quickly so it can be corrected rather than wait till the okay. end. So. All right, yeah, let me go to some others. Um, wait, uh, yes, tell us your name first. Martha. Martha, go ahead. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. No, I was just on what Steve was saying. I was a class rep and I was instructed to take attendance just in the first class. Okay. And then I let the office know and the office followed up with everybody who didn't uh -huh. appear. Okay. Yeah. All right. But I did want to ask a question too. Yeah, what you said earlier, you mentioned the the stuff, the administrative time that it took the staff to do some of these things. Are you looking for a way to streamline some of that? Yes. Oh yes. That's the whole idea of our technology uh, objective here is we, <laughs> we think some of those tasks can, we know they can be automated. And so, uh, so, but, but we need better software to do that. So yes, oh, yes, software. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It requires software. Uh, there's I think a remote question. A re okay, start. there's a remote question, and then we'll do Peter and Clark and Diane. Who, the remote question is from Ray. Ray, go ahead, Ray. Yes, uh, two two entities you you probably are in touch with, but I mentioned them: the Dartmouth Alumni Association uh -huh. and, and Tuck and the medical school alumni associations. They're all prospective participants yes. as the age in life. That's one point. Mm. Huh? Second, there are other, there are lifetime uh, uh, extended learning programs that are not part of OSHA. Some, many in New England, I think Harvard, for example. Mm -hmm. So perhaps you could contact some of those mm -hmm. in due course. Okay. As a way now, to finally, let, let me ask, uh, OSHA is an organization. It has a, a central headquarters. How are our relationships with them? We must have reporting requirements, for example. Our, our relationship with them is outstanding. Yeah. Uh, we just, Peter and myself and Lisa, just had a uh, conversation mm. late last week with the uh, executive director of the national organization. He couldn't be more helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the, the they, appreciate what we do here. Uh, they consider us one of the top tier organizations in that of those 125. And uh, we, we can learn a lot from them too. It's a it's a wonderful relationship. I, mm -hmm. I don't think it could be any better, frankly. Okay. Peter, did you want to add to that or I wanted to call on this Peter over here? <laughs> yeah, go this Peter. I want to I want to address the, the, the competition and the relationship with Dartmouth. Uh -huh. um, there are six points of contact that you have to be aware of. Five are with the schools at Dartmouth itself. 
Three are with the professional schools, as Ray Malley just said, Tuck, Thayer, and the med school. Um, and Guarini. Guarini. No, no, hold that for a second. Oh. <laughs> These three schools. The three professional schools. Um, their programs that they offer their alumni tend to be one-off hour sessions held during the day for mostly working alumni. So we don't offer a competitive product directly against what they're offering to the alumni. We're offering kind of another niche on top of that. And we've been working with the three professional schools to see if we can move through their communications with their alumni. When you talk about the Dartmouth alumni, it's five different sets of alumni, each controlled by the, under, each controlled by the separate school. There's not one alumni out there. The undergraduate school is a little tougher. They've been harder to crack into. Um, they put on a lot of programs that compete directly with some of the stuff we do. Some of the stuff we offer tends to be beyond what they're offering, but they've been much more hesitant about allowing us into their alumni mm -hmm. lists. Um, they're much more fenced off than the other three professional schools. The fifth school, the Greeny School, if you don't know about it, is is all of the other professional, excuse me, all the other masters and PhD programs are within the Greeny School. It doesn't matter if you're in the physics department or the history department or wherever it is, it's all in the Greeny School. And I don't look at them as access for alumni participants. I look at them as study group leaders. Yes. Mm -hmm. Masters and PhD programs are always looking to test their theories and I'm looking at them more as, as study group leaders. The sixth area that we always have to be aware of is the provost's office. We are housed in the provost's office. We have to conform to the provost's office in all Dartmouth um, rules, regulations, whatever it may be, accounting rules, HR rules, whatever it is. So when you think about our relationship with Dartmouth, it's, it's six different points and it has multiple aspects to each of those six different points. So it's not, it's not easy to describe um, when you say, what's your relationship with Dartmouth? You have to talk about which part of Dartmouth. Yeah, the devil's in the detail. Thank you, Peter. That's helpful. Peter and then Clark, and then we'll go online again. I'm sorry, go ahead, Peter. Yep. You mentioned in the strategic goals, expanding and maintaining technology. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, if I'm trusting that the budget is expanding to maintain those costs, but I'd like to see the budget expand to maintain staff support. Uh-huh. You're going to have more automation. Mm -hmm. You're going to need more people, more tech support for that automation. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's fair to dump it on the shoulders of the uh -huh. current staff. Right. Okay. Thanks, Peter. Good comment, Clark. Yes, I'd uh, like to say a couple of words about this. The strategic plan itself. Mm -hmm. So many times, organizations uh, have the uh, reputation of putting these things on on the shelf, mm -hmm. too yes. big and thick. Yep. Uh, this one doesn't meet that. Uh, <laughs> condition uh i'm like bill said i'm impressed that it's data driven mm -hmm. and can break it down into manageable pieces mm -hmm. to digest and work on um and 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 the structure is not voluminous so it seems to me to tie this strategic plan into membership mm -hmm. recruitment um printing costs aside wouldn't it be a, a good idea to print it in, mm -hmm. in a form that's that's can be easily distributed yep. on a single piece of laminated uh, paper because it's worthy to cogitate yeah. about Thanks. and see how you might be able to fit in. And most people, uh, and I'm one of them, tend to be drawn to an organization that has a plan mm -hmm. that I can understand. Mm -hmm. And maybe this could be a membership opportunity yeah. thank you okay so use the plan itself as a membership opportunity right. i think right. that's a great idea package it for folks to easily digest it right i like that idea so we have two online we have two online and um, one of them is colin but at first i'm going to read one from terry and benisa okay what Can happened to the summer term i like taking these in many courses might benefit from good weather mm -hmm. i don't think mm -hmm. this on the summer lecture series. Okay, so one question that came in the chat was what happened to the uh, summer uh, term? Um, in a nutshell, Lisa, I think you <clears> could <throat> respond to the current 
current state? I mean, not that it would never change, but right. the current state. Um, so we did a summer term for three different summers. Um, it was basically um, a small group of people that reached out to study leaders um, just as a pilot, really, to test the waters to see how things would go. Um, we learned a lot, but curriculum really wants a break. They're working three terms uh, a year. Um, so unless there's a separate group that could do that, we've got plenty of space here. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But I think there, there's a fine line of how much more can we add and can we do with mm -hmm. the current staff and do what we're doing well. It's not about quantity, it's more about quality. So we tried it, it did work well and we learned a lot, but then um, mm -hmm. What happened, well, we have but, summer lecture series as well as the right, other competing we're, thing. We're working on that on top of doing courses in the right. summer. So, right. um, yeah, I mean, that's not something that we could look at it again at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was well received, and we maybe had about 250 people participate mm -hmm. in those courses. So. Okay. Okay. There's one other. Colin had a question online. Uh, no, I don't have a question, but rather a comment to support the idea of going outside. Uh, local presenters to find experts in other fields who can offer e even wider range of subjects, particularly, okay. I think, in the uh, technical area. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to see a little bit more on the technical area. I took a, a few courses on that, one by Tom Finney, that was very good. I think mm -hmm. we could see some more in that area. Mm -hmm. Also, that surely is a vehicle to stimulate uh, more growth by people from outside the Upper Valley. I, mm -hmm. I understand there's the social aspect that's very much Upper Valley. That's fine. That's good. But to uh, increase uh, income and so forth, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've looked through all the numbers to see how many people have actually uh, joined from outside the Upper Valley, but I have to believe there's a huge potential to have uh, um, more people join. And that will be wonderful, not just for income, but also for ideas about other courses. Thanks, Collins. Your idea is you expand our scope in terms of recruiting um, study leaders from outside the area, and that might in turn also expand the number of students or who sign up uh, outside the area. That's helpful. Um, Diane, did you still have a comment? I know you're reporting in for another group, Diane. Um, <laughs> go ahead. I did, but I'm going to pass. Okay, all right, you pass. Yeah, go ahead, Ro. Um, so this is my first year taking course yeah. work, and um, what I'm hearing from an organization standpoint is there's there's quite a bit of hierarchy and committees and subcommittees. Is it possible to ha have an organization chart? That's a good idea. So have an organization again, chart. So that yes. we know what committees are there yes. if anyone wants to be. Absolutely, it. absolutely, That's yes. Good. That is online, but it's not easy to find. And I, yes. and I, oh. and I, you know, I take your point. I think a chart, a simple chart, would be really good, and mm -hmm. that would help. And maybe with it would help recruit people too, because they could see people's, uh, yeah. emails or yeah. something. Yeah, so yeah. That that's a great idea. Directly. Thanks, Ro. Yes, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Faye. Faye, thanks. Yeah, Faye. and um, there are two, at least two of us here who have been here longer than Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> No, it can't be possible. <laughs> and Ginny is online. Yes, and Ginny. And David, David and yeah, yeah. at the same time. Okay. <laughs> 1993. Wow. And, uh, wow. and I joined in 93 or 94. Excellent. Trying to find David's classes. <laughs> <laughs> that was before we met. <laughs> um, so uh, I agree with this gentleman here in the blue sweater in front of us here that we miss the classes at Dartmouth. Uh -huh. And a lot of you don't know any different, so it doesn't matter to you. But for those of us who do, uh, it's who enjoyed working in Hanover, um, and it feels weird to have Osher at Dartmouth, actually Osher at Lebanon. Mm -hmm. and not be at dark, not be in heaven. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question is, is there any chance that any of these classes will ever again be taught in heaven? I'd be happy to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> so 
<laughs> so the general word from the college to everyone at the college who is currently challenged for space mm -hmm. is that they're so challenged for space that they're telling most of us, don't ask us for anything, anything for the next two years. Yeah. There are some spaces that we can hold for a one-time thing, like a room in the library, typically wouldn't hold a class full of people, but in terms mm -hmm. of, for instance, the DOC is permanently not available to us. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, correct. They've oh, remodeled yeah. That's it gone. without the ceiling. There's no office space, there's no classroom yeah. space. It's filled up to be a dining and entertainment okay. building. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so they're, they're having some space challenges for sure. You can <laughs> see it by driving through the, con Everywhere. the campus. Yeah. There's like construction <laughs> all over the place right. uh, always. Anyway. Yeah, so we have the expansion that's going out on Route 10. Yeah. yeah, I mean, never say never, but well, there's a lot of expansion going on. To, to your to your point, I don't know if, if how many Dartmouth alumni are in here, but Dartmouth put out a thing called um, the Framework for the Future back in November of 2020. And if you've read the framework, it was a um, inventory of all of the properties that Dartmouth owns throughout its vast holdings throughout New Hampshire, Vermont, everywhere, but especially downtown Hanover. But if you go to page 10 critical page. Dartmouth over the next 30 years plans on increasing its current staff, faculty, and students from 10,600 to 14,600 to 18,600. Somewhere between 40 and 80% over the next 30 years, and they already don't have space for their current staff size and faculty. So the idea that we're going to move back to the campus is a stretch, I think, at the point. Plus, also for this group, the other criteria we need is 60 proximate spaces for parking. And I don't know if you've been in Hanover lately. Um, there aren't 60 spaces anywhere in Hanover, let alone proximate to one building. Yeah. So when you, yeah. your question is, are we moving back to Hanover? I don't think so. Not for not for a good ten years plus. Yeah, yeah. The parking is huge, and uh, I mean, I've, having been involved in the facilities committee uh, for years, um, that was always a showstopper. We need a place with parking for sure. You know? um, I want to. We've got time for like one more question, but like, I see three more questions. We have one more online, and then Ro, and then uh, Diane. Go ahead, um, Ro. Yeah, um, yeah, Peter's comment, of course, that was written in 2020 before. COVID mm -hmm. and how online learning has been expanding, particularly at the university level um, with people um, taking courses online rather than in person. Dartmouth is Dartmouth. So I'm wondering if that's going to change those numbers over time because oh, the online know. numbers, yeah. But Dartmouth is, yep. considers itself a residential college. Yeah. Well, it, it has, wants to I bring mean, anything on here, and it's not going to go to online. Well, I don't. <laughs> okay. I'll leave that to the Dartmouth alumni here, but right. I don't see Dartmouth changing that basic philosophical orientation. Well, from okay. a financial standpoint, they may have. To yeah, let me just get Gary Johnson. Okay, Gary Johnson online has a uh, question or right. comment. And also, Marianne Peters has had her hand up for a long time. Thank you very much, uh, Carol. Okay, we have two people online, Gary and then Marianne and then Diane, and then we're going to close out. Go ahead. Okay, as a retired Dartmouth educator and uh, sometimes uh, study leader for OSHER and uh, sometimes participant in many courses in OSHER, I guess I've seen it in all directions. Uh, let me speak as the study leader perspective. Uh, I prefer in, in person. Uh, and I do that because the audience that's in-house gives you visual cues all the time as to what they're hearing from you at the time. You obviously modify your, your next comment based on what you've seen and heard from the participants in your class. And so I think the, the classroom experience becomes much more enriched than it would be just as a remote or even a hybrid. In the case of the hybrid courses, it's again, only those that are in the class in which the visual cues are actually being sent to you as, a, as an instructor and uh, you modify or uh, approach maybe questions that you're going to be laying out in the future uh, in a slightly different way, as opposed to being interrupted by something that's going on remotely. Now, having said that, I should point out that during COVID, I was involved in developing an international series of courses 
um, on the geology of the Northwest Himalayas in Pakistan and India. And we had over 300 participants. We had 26 speakers over a six month period. And it was very successful. But at the end of the day, at the end of the hour, we could only handle about two or three questions before mm -hmm. people had to sign off. And uh, it was very successful in getting the information out, but it was not as successful as you might imagine in getting questions from the audience, so many in the audience, and how you could respond to those. On the other topic that came up in this meeting, um, coordinating with Dartmouth at its various uh, institutional level uh, course offerings or seminar offerings, it should be pointed out that the daily D or the whatever it's now called, the uh, day break, not day break, but uh, the daily oh, news that Fox. comes out from uh, yeah. Fox, yeah, or whatever it is. I get it, I forget what it's called. Uh, <laughs> there's announcements about seminars from various departments. And uh, my department in particular has two weekly seminars and it's usually announced what they are and what the Zoom link might be. Mm -hmm. I think the point would be if we want to coordinate and sort of expand the curricular opportunities that OSHER has, the uh, way to coordinate that would be on a weekly basis, find out what seminars are pre-announced, what their links would be, and uh, usually they're midday sometimes, sometimes the end of the day and they're hours long, one hour long, but the link is there. And so that could be something that we could use to sort of increase the viability of our options. And the final point would be how diversified this whole program has been over the years that I've been involved. It is incredibly eclectic. And when I say that, what I mean is there's everything from technical, wide ranging, globally important topics to things that are local and how to plant your tulips in the spring or in the fall, I should say. But <laughs> the point being, you know, we are not provincial. We are quite eclectic and we are quite cosmopolitan, I think, in many of the things we offer. Yes, we're housed in the Upper Valley, but that has never precluded the topics that we uh, are uh, offering to our, our, our clientele. And to uh, reach out to various other OLE or uh, OSHA groups nationally and internationally, that's, that's really important. I am completely amazed at some of the universities that I've looked at and uh, was, am a graduate of that are huge universities, 35, 40,000 people, and they have only offerings in a semester that's maybe 40. You know, where is it? I mean, Dartmouth is completely different. I, th I should say OSHA or Dartmouth is completely different. We offer so much and so diverse and such wide ranging topics with very accomplished individuals that are participating that uh, I really can't see much fault with what's going on. But again, my bias as a teacher is in person, but I've done both and I understand the importance of both. Anyway, thanks. Thank you, Gary, I appreciate that. Diane, you had one more comment and then we're gonna close out. One of the things I think- And also, oh, Mary, I'm sorry. Peter. I'm sorry. Uh, Marianne Peters has had her hand oh. up for a very long time. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Diane, you got something for you real quick? No, let's see. Take okay, care. Marianne, go ahead. <laughs> okay. See if I can unmute. Am I unmuted? Yes, you are. Good, very good. Uh, listening to all of this has really been interesting. One thing that I wonder about, uh, this meeting is terrific with it's membership so participating. Has within the recent past, perhaps in conjunction with this process, has any kind of a survey gone out to the membership? Just there, about? Have been, there have been surveys. Uh, there hasn't been one in the recent past last that I November. can think of. Yeah. Oh, last November. November. Oh, I'm sorry. Last November, we sent out a survey. Yeah. Alan but yes, Schnorr. yeah, right. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, surveying is, a, is an important process. Uh, cool. <clears throat> yeah, because uh, I wonder, you're talking about increasing participation, developing partnerships, et cetera. Yep. Uh, would it be helpful in any respect to send out a survey asking 
what people would really like to see happen. What occurs to me, and believe me, being relatively new to this, <clears throat> I have not poured over the course schedule the way I'm certain many of you have over the years, but do we offer, say, evening, weekend courses? Yes. I, I know that's I mean, not weekend, but I've seen you know. how much do we are. Uh, in other words, what is what is our target market? Is it retirees, basically? Do we want to include or offer these programs to younger people who may be working or raising families? If those people are working more or less a traditional Monday through Friday, workday schedule, eight to five or whatever, they're not going to be taking Shakespeare at 2 p.m. on Mondays and Thursdays. So I am wondering about our commitment to increasing the membership. Secondly, part and parcel of that is, I've heard so much about Dartmouth, of course. What are we doing to partner with Dartmouth Health? I will never forget moving when I first moved to Bennington from the New York area um, about 12, 15 years ago. I had to go to the orthopedist for a sprained ankle. She was a young doctor. She was very excited about a lecture she was going to that evening, given through Green Mountain Academy in Manchester, Vermont. And it was some kind, it was on literature or whatever, it had nothing to do with medicine or health. And I have the feeling with all the thousands and thousands of employees at Dartmouth Health, there have to be many who would enjoy these opportunities. And if so, on what schedule? You know, Thank that's you. a 24-hour situation. All Thank right, you. I won't take any more time. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate these suggestions. Um, so I just want to also take this moment to thank all of you for coming, for your time, your participation. Uh, it means a lot to us. Uh, uh, you, uh, we will follow up. You will be getting an email uh, from us shortly. Uh, so if there's anything that we didn't get to talk about that we should have or that you wanted to say that you didn't get a chance to or you didn't want to uh, today, um, you'll have a chance to write back because we would like to continue the dialogue. And thank you once again thank for coming. You. Thank you.